Good morning, guys. Good Tuesday morning. My days are completely out of sorts. My house is destroyed. There's one piece of furniture that's been moved back to where it's supposed to be. He has painted the hallways, the living room, um, repaired a place in the ceiling in the living room and the bedroom. Painted the bedroom yesterday, putting the second coat on it today, and in the bathroom. Possibly, I had the kitchen repainted five years ago, kind of a very light gray color. And since I'm not going with grays, we're gonna see if he has time to paint that tomorrow. If not, it's not that big of a deal. It blends, okay. I have on no jewelry, no earrings, because I have no idea <laughs> where that stuff is. And um, I packed some of it. John, I had packed several small containers for my jewelry and stuff in the bathroom. And then while I was over at Mother's Sunday, John just cleaned the uh, bathroom out, put it, because, you know, what we're having to do is to put stuff where we can because they're coming in, hopefully, next week, even if Tony finishes up today or tomorrow, we're praying that the carpet comes in so they can get the carpet in next week and the flooring. Um, so we can't move anything back. So if they get everything down next week, that's going to give me one week to get the house back in some kind of order to start small groups two weeks from tonight. Are we pushing it to the limit? Well, of course we are. <laughs> That's the way we do things. And uh, we actually have been trying to get this painter for months. And he is in such high demand because he is um, hes just one of the best. And so... Um, he actually decided to come on before he took another big job because we had been waiting for a while and John told him, you know, that I was starting back with Bible study. Not only that, the big cabinet in my living room, not the bookcase, but the one on the other side of the TV wall, that John has taken that book, that cabinet completely out and he's on his way to the cabinet maker who made those 20 years ago to see if he can turn it in from an old TV case to a matching bookcase um, like on the other side because when we built the house the TV was in that cabinet it had a slide out thing and it tilted and so of course TVs have gotten so much bigger <clears throat> and so we're trying to make it into a matching bookcase which will be great especially Christmas to give me another whole bookcase for my Santa collections and all. So, anyway, I am sleeping in the front bedroom. It had been painted several years ago, the guest bedroom, and John has been on the couch every night. This is the last two nights that we've had to take down the bed. I mean, when you paint and do flooring, you just move. That's just all there is to it. You just have to move. And, um, it's going to be so fresh and so nice and so clean feeling. Um, like I said, we just did a couple of rooms painting five years ago. My dining room, if you look back, I think on my old, old, old Christmas home tours, you'll see it was called Raspberry Truffle. It was beautiful, but um, lighter, cleaner colors now. The wallpaper is still in the foyer. It's probably not ever going to change. I just love that wallpaper and everybody that comes in talks about how beautiful it is. So, so anyway, I'm a little exhausted today. Um, 
we've been out of sorts. We've not been eating real good. I need to stop and get us some vegetables to put in the crock pot or to cook or something because I know we've eaten Subway and then we ate like some um, grilled chicken from somewhere. And I don't know, it just feels like we're just, well, it's just, everything's been out of sorts. So, and I am extremely fatigued and tired from stress. If you are not on our Let Your Light Shine Facebook page, you don't know this, but I hate to even tell you because I hate to even speak the words. But they are what they are and I am more in an acceptance mode today on Tuesday than I was on Sunday and yesterday. Those two days were absolutely horrible. My body is feeling it. My back is hurting. My fatigue is really high. I did not know, I did not have any clue at all. Pastor started preaching Sunday and um, he was preaching uh, from the scripture about, you know, the most dangerous prayer that you can pray is not that, not my will, but thine be done, Father. And, and so my girlfriend had texted me, I just had my phone laying there. And she said, why is the live stream not working? And I said, I have no clue. And I just laid my phone back down. Actually, I turned it over and I'm glad I did. I turned it over and uh, John was downstairs doing security. I was sitting with my brother and my sister-in-law. And as he started preaching, he started telling about all the places that God, you know, had brought him through the years and that how he left some places and, you know, was glad to leave and how that he had left some places that he didn't want to leave. And his last church, he was there for 18 years. So when he came to Summerton, basically he came to retire. He wanted to retire from there. Well, the Lord has changed his plans and it's absolutely, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell this without crying. I am going to tell this without crying. Okay. I've cried for two solid days, but there is a church down close to Fort Lauderdale, Miami area that lost their pastor suddenly, April the 28th, 51 years old, he died with a heart attack, just dropped dead. And that church has been having um, just different people to fill the pulpit. And uh, it's an international church, which is the kind of church that Pastor and Jamie were at before. Um, all different in Atlanta. They had all different, um, all different ethnicities. And so they love that. And we have a little of that, but not very much because we're <laughs> rural Alabama. It's just a lot where we live. But uh, so when they went on vacation, July, um, they were down there and they met with the state overseer. They were having dinner with him and he asked him to come preach at this church. And from what I've been told, if what I've been told is true, they said, no, they were on vacation, you know, but just ask them. And the church fell in love with them. Of course they would. And they presented to him to come to that church, which he had no plans of leaving, but he had to pray, not my will, but thine be done, Father. And unfortunately for us, the Lord is leading him to this church. I am devastated. I don't like it. And I also know that he is many of y'all's pastor as well as my pastor. I know that many of you watch him on Sunday. Many of you watch him on Sunday night after your church service on Sunday, and many of you watch him during the week. I've had so many of y'all tell me how that you love his preaching and how he ministers to you. And I'm here to tell you, when he started it, I still didn't think anything about it. Some people, a few people did know. I had no clue, and John was not even there beside me. I guess it might be best because I, I held myself together. I just bowed my head and I just started crying. But he said it was his resignation day that the Lord had led him to a different place. And he said, I, guys, I didn't ask for this. 
So, I have been heartbroken. I cried all day Sunday. John came up from security. I met him out the hallway. I was full on people, because people kept stopping me and hugging me because they knew how upset I was. Some of the younger adults, they just, they know me, they love me. And they saw how terribly upset I was. And I guess, so many angles to this. I have been through a lot of pastor changes there. So, um, I know the good, bad, and the ugly, okay? I've been there 41 years. I know what it's like to get a fantastic preacher, and I know what it's like not to get a fantastic preacher, okay? It's just the way it is. Uh, we had some very, very hard times the seven years before Pastor Massey came. The last pastor we had, his wife had had breast cancer, and it came back, and basically for several years, he was in survival mode. She was in survival mode, and I have often thought that they came to that church for us to take care of them during that time, and uh, it was not good. She passed away. He shortly left after that, but then we got Pastor Massey, and oh my goodness. And when you get Pastor Massey, you get Jamie, who is a fireball women's leader like we've never had before. The mentoring program, the yearning for renewal, the women's conferences, we've never had any of that. She brought all of that with her. So we're losing two great pastors. Um... one of the hardest things I don't know I just said <laughs> there's I said a lot of stuff and I really didn't pray about it until this morning Couldn't, just didn't have the words to say um we're dealing with pandemic we're dealing with a people of COVID we're dealing with our government being total disarray with a president that doesn't know what he's doing, with fear, uncertainty of what's coming down the pipe. We're losing, I mean, we're living in times of our own people fearing of losing their jobs for not being vaccinated. We're living in times of people being very sick that are vaccinated. I'm still dealing with loss this year, my brother. I'm dealing with a 94-year-old mother that just yesterday completely forgot how to use her washer machine and dryer. Totally. And it didn't come back. So, I, like you, y'all send me a lot of prayer requests, which I pray for. But we're all dealing with a lot of stuff. And so y'all know how much I love my church. You know I teach church. You know that I share my pastors with you. I share things. I share many of his sermons and lessons that I teach. So I just feel like the core of what I... And now first of all, Jesus Christ is my core. The core of my community being taken away. My Sundays are my oasis. I have the, the, the shirt that says uh, church is my happy hour. I wear that during the winter and I mean that. I can go there and I can release and I can be empowered. So <clears throat> I've been devastated. And I wrote both of them. I texted both of them Sunday. I could not go up and talk to them after church. I was a blubbering idiot. I went home and I cried. And I, I cried and I cried. And John and I have talked, talked, and talked so deeply. They have such a big vision. And 
not everybody into our church got into that mission. I'll just tell you that. I did. And I'm, so th and I'm not saying I'm good and they're bad. I'm just saying it is what it is. I don't want them to leave. I hate what happened for that other church. But I don't want them to leave. Is that selfish? Yeah. But this is the conclusion that I came to late yesterday evening. There is not a doubt in my mind that Victor Massey is one of the greatest men of God. <clears throat> that I've had the privilege of knowing and loving and serving under. <sighs> pull it together, Suzanne, pull it together. Don't do this. encouraged him in his ministry. I sent him a text last Wednesday of my devotion that I had read that talked about that great people keep going when the going is tough. And that life is messy, that people are messy, that situations are messy, that people are hard. But a great person for God keeps going. And I seen him that because it felt like that was him and I said to him pastor I immediately thought of you when I read this devotion you are the greatest thing that has ever happened to our church and you are this kind of leader little did I know prophetically what I was speaking because now he's going to be that great leader for this church their pastor dropped dead of heart attack at 51 years old. And he's leaving us. But see, I know who my Redeemer is. It's not Victor Massey, okay? Somebody said that to me, just like, okay, he's not your God. I, I never said he was. I'm itching all over. Okay, this is what I do when my nerves are bad. I itch all over. Um, I came to this conclusion yesterday evening, and I wrote all this in my prayer journal this morning. I know Victor Massey is a man of God. I know he hears from God. I know he talks to God. I know God directs him. And the only reason that I can accept this is because I know he's doing what God has told him. I wish God had not told him. <laughs> Selfish. But I've got to believe, and I do believe, and there's so many outliers that goes with this that I can't explain to y'all. But if he's taken Victor Massey as part of a plan We've got to be part of that plan. He's not going to jerk away a wonderful man without knowing that there are those of us that want to see our church grow and the will of God to be done. Oh gosh, I was just going to tell y'all, I wasn't going to get into all this. Most of the people in my church want to see the move of God and they want the church to move forth. I've been there 41 years. I don't know what the future holds. I can sit here and say we're going to have somebody fantastic to come in, but that doesn't always happen. Now, the way the church of God does is they send us our pastors. We're not like a Baptist church. Where you have a pulpit committee that goes out and tries out 
interviews, listens to different pastors. We don't do that. It's just never been that way. The Church of God sends you a pastor. So, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see who God is going to send. I'm asking, not the Church of God, but for God to send that person. And I have to believe that they will pray over who they send. Will I be happy? I don't know. I've been there through thick and thin, thick and thin, thick and thin. My small group starts two weeks from tonight. Not everybody's from our church. I'm having young women that are in church and that are not in church in my small group because the Lord led me to contact some young women that I feel like needs to be there and they're excited about coming. I'm excited about teaching that word and I've got a lot of work to get done because I do my own curriculum. I don't use a book. So, uh, I need your prayers. I pray for y'all a lot. I get invested in you. I care about what you're going through. Some of y'all are going through cancer treatments right now. Several of you have lost your husbands due to different things. I actually have three subscribers on here that have contacted me that said their husbands dropped dead the day after they got the vaccine. Three. That's heartbreaking to me. Um, we've prayed for people with COVID. We've prayed for people losing family that are so near and dear to them. There's one of my subscribers on here that has lost a husband and a daughter in the past year. I have all of those names written down. And I, when I pray, I have a specific day that I try to pray a lot for you too. But the most current needs I keep in a different list and I lay my hands on there and I pray for y'all. Now I need your prayer and I know you will pray. I've got some prayer warriors on here that I never hesitate contacting when I need prayer and I need prayer. I need prayer. Our church needs prayer because a lot of you are losing your pastor that listen to him every Sunday. Um, I want God's will to be done. Pray for me that my mind, see this is a just, it's, God hasn't allowed it to be a distraction because pastor's going where he's needed, but it, it, it is a distraction to me because I love him so much, okay? So the enemy will try to use it against me, is what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to word everything carefully. Because I was, oh, how I respect my pastor and his wife. How I respect them. How I respect them. I, you know, you're never anywhere that some people don't get to where they don't like you or they want something different or something like that. And I've told people before, don't say nothing in front of me. Don't say anything in front of me. Don't say anything negative in front of me because I don't want to hear it. I don't believe in it. I don't do it. Chick-fil-A serves the masses. I was going to go through Chick-fil-A and they're fast, but they are lined up to the Home Depot parking lot. Uh, I was just going to get me some grilled chicken, but I don't know. I believe in a great, let me, and, and let me just say this, I'm pouring my heart out to you. I'm not speaking in doubt. I'm not speaking that I don't believe. I'm speaking to you to a person that my little world's been shook. A lot of our little worlds have been shook for different reasons. But I'm, I, I believe in a great big God that's in control. And I know that there are a lot of people praying and I know that God's gonna be in control. I know that. It just hurts. And there's no sense of me lying about it and saying, we're gonna be fine. They're just gonna go down there and they're gonna do great and we're not gonna miss them and we're gonna do fine. Well, that'd just be a lie. That would just be a lie because I'm gonna miss them like crazy. I've done, I've done already loaded, downloaded the, the church out. 
so I can listen to his sermons. I'm going to be listening to his sermons on YouTube, probably on Sunday nights. He's not going to leave me. <laughs> I'm going to listen to him. <laughs> oh, guys, just pray. Just pray for me. Just pray for my attitude to be what it should be. Just pray that this is not a distraction to try to stop my ministry. As soon as I get to a place in the house where I can uh, record, I will. I have three lessons of 1 Samuel ready that I've already studied and gone through. They are ready. And I'm itching to get back and to teach 1 Samuel. I'm going to use some of 1 Samuel in my, uh, with my Bible study group. So I'm itching to teach. I just don't have a clear spot in the house. <laughs> I may need to go down to the basement this afternoon and just clear out a spot because we've had to move a lot of our furniture down there and, um, and clear me out a spot and say, okay, just don't even look around me. This is what I'm gonna record. This is what I'm gonna do. I love y'all. I'm thankful that I have you. I'm thankful that you love me. I'm thankful that you've loved my pastor. You've been so accommodating to him. Irene from Louisiana, she's the happy homemaker up here. She is probably the first person that fell in love, in love with Pastor Massey. And she, she wasn't in her church then and he was her pastor. And she made no bones about it that she loved that man's preaching and she loved him and she she would send him messages and tell him and one year at a Christmas party on a Christmas video I even had him to tell her hello and to speak to her and so um, so many of y'all have loved him like that um, I know that Jody Watt has has watched him for years and just, you know, that's that's been her church. And so, we're all going to miss them. I'll tell you later where you can watch them. I just don't feel like I need to tell it right now. But I will let you know later what the name of the church is. And when he gets down there and gets established, I'll let you know so that you can watch him there as well. Okay? And maybe things will just be tremendous to where you will still watch, you know, our services. But I will let you know where he's going so that you can watch him there later. I just don't feel like this is the appropriate time to do that. So, all right, I've rambled on. I've already gone past Hobby Lobby. That's where I was going. I was going to Chick-fil-A. I should have just gotten Chick-fil-A line, but... Uh, I'm just going to go back to Hobby Lobby and look around and maybe get me something to eat afterwards. And like I said, my house is just in chaos. So y'all just pray that I have the energy and the strength to pull it all back together. But I will. I will. Miss Jessica's coming over to help me get it back in order when, we, when he gets through. So I love you guys and I appreciate you. And I know you're going to be praying for me. I know that. I know that. And I receive it, and I thank you in advance. Love you guys. Bye.